right, so hello and welcome back to Books and Things and welcome to another video. And today I have a bit of a book haul for you, including some books that I bought while in Japan. So this video is mostly a book haul, but it's going to be a little bit of a video of two halves um, because I have acquired quite a few books in the last month or two. Um, too many possibly, but that's fine. Quite a lot of these books are books that I got for my birthday, um, but a few of these books are also books that I bought while in Japan. My husband Nick and I went on holiday to Japan um, in May, which was fantastic. It was really, really cool. And while in Japan, we did go to quite a few Japanese bookshops um, and I did a bit of vlogging and I bought a couple of books. So I thought I would just put in some of the footage that I took in Japan um, of bookshops while I'm here um, and then I will tell you a little bit about the books I bought in Japan and the books I bought elsewhere. While we were on holiday in Japan we were moving around a lot, we went to a lot of different places um, and we didn't have time everywhere we went to find a bookshop um, but I did try where possible to scout out a bookshop because I always do want to go and visit bookshops. The place where we visited the most bookshops was definitely Kyoto which um, was a city that I really really loved. I thought it was really interesting and um, we saw a lot of like really interesting historical buildings in Kyoto um, and we did find the time to visit a few bookshops. One bookshop that we went to in Kyoto was Maruzen, which I think is a chain, which was a really massive, beautiful bookshop with a lot of books. Um, we did have an English language section, uh, but I didn't buy anything there. But it was a really massive, beautiful bookshop and a really nice one to have a look around. I also discovered in Kyoto um, a bookshop called Books and Things. And I was so very excited to go to Books and Things because it's called Books and Things. Um, however, it was a special specialist art bookshop, which is not um, exactly what I'm interested in. So I went in very briefly, but I didn't do any filming in books and things because it was very small um, and I felt a bit awkward about filming. And then the other bookshop we went to in Kyoto was called Kumazawa, um, and that was a really lovely bookshop as well. And in there I spotted a copy of Sisters in Yellow by Meiko Kawakami, which was really exciting to see because Meiko Kawakami is one of my favourite Japanese authors. Sisters in Yellow has just come out in Japan. Um, I know that the English translation rights have been sold, um, but I don't think it's going to be published in English until like 2025 or something. But I'm very excited for when it is because I love Meiko Kawakami a lot. So it's really fun to spot her new book. One of my favorite places we went in Japan was Takayama in the mountains, which was lovely. Um, and Takayama had a really lovely city library that I had a little look around. Um, and it also had a fantastic pen shop. Um, so not strictly bookshops, but you know, tangentially related. Um, and really, really interesting to see. The pen shop in I was a sort of a general stationery shop and had a lot of very beautiful, fun stationery. Um, and was really interesting to have a wander around. And then there were two bookshops we went to where we did actually buy books. Um, so one of them was in Tokyo and that was Books Kino Kunia. And that was this massive bookshop with several floors of books um, and a really big English language section, including a section of um, Japanese literature translated into English, which was great. Um, and it was just a really fantastic bookshop. So I did buy a few things there, which I'll show you in a minute. And I really enjoyed having a wander around that bookshop and um, seeing what was there. It's quite weird, like, walking around a Japanese bookshop because obviously um, because I don't read Japanese and I don't know Japanese characters like I don't even necessarily always know like what section is which um, but I do feel like walking around a bookshop even if I don't understand the language um, and can't read the characters like they are still books and I still find it comforting and I still find it really nice. Um, so yeah, I really enjoyed walking around that bookshop too. And then the final bookshop I want to talk about is Arn Bookstore and Cafe in Kanazawa, which was my favourite bookshop that I went to and was really, really lovely. Um, and I had like really nice experience there. Um, so Arn is a bookshop and a cafe. And me and Nick went there and had like juice and cake um, and I had a really nice wander around the shelves. It was just one of those like really lovely independent secondhand bookshops that just had like all the atmosphere and like slightly quirky decoration of a bookshop um, and I just really really loved it. They had a lot of second hand books and they seemed really friendly um, and I had decided that I thought it would be nice in Japan to buy myself a copy, like a Japanese language edition of um, a book by Banani Oshimoto, who is my favourite Japanese author. So I had a conversation with the bookseller through Google Translate um, and asked if they had any copies of Banani Oshimoto's book. And they ended up buying two of Banani Oshimoto's books, um, which is very exciting. So back out of the vlog um, and returning to me, I will show you the two Banani Oshimoto books that I bought um, in their bookshop. So this is NP, which um, is called NP. Um, in Japanese as well. I don't really know why I um, thought that it might not be, um, but yeah. 
It's a very weird cover, but it is quite a weird book. The other one I got was this. Um, this is a really beautiful, lovely hardback edition of um, a book by Banana Hashimoto, which um, is a short story collection and in English it's called Asleep. Um, though I think the Japanese title actually translates as um, Shirakawa Night Boat. So I've read both Asleep and NP in English um, and it's just really nice to own like a Japanese edition of them. I'm not like thinking of learning Japanese especially. I doubt I will ever be able to read these editions, um, but it's just really nice to have them, which maybe is slightly random, but I just, I really love Banani Oshroto's books so much. And it's just really nice to have like some special editions of her books in Japanese. I'm really excited that I own both of these and it's very exciting to buy them in Japan. And then the other two books which I bought in Japan, um, which I bought in Tokyo were these two, both Japanese classics. This is Ten Nights Dreams and Our Cat's Grave by Natsumi Soseki. And this is The Sailor Who Fell From Grace With The Sea by Yokio Mishima. I have already read both of these, so I will have spoken about them or be about to speak about them in my May wrap up, so I won't go on about them for too much here. But this is a collection of short stories by Natsumi Soseki. Zeki, um, 10 dream sequences um, and a story about a cat dying. The story about the death of the cat was fantastic um, and this is a slightly odd novel from the 1960s about um, a teenage boy and his mother um, and his mother's new boyfriend um, and it gets quite dark and I don't know if I liked it or not but it was really interesting. <laughs> so that concludes the sort of Japanese literature section of the book haul but I do have quite a few other books to show you today because it was my birthday in May and it got quite a lot of books as presents um, so I think two of the books in this pile um, I bought for myself and all the rest were birthday presents and I'm very excited for them all so um, let me go through them. I won't spend too long on them because as usual I don't know necessarily that much about them but I quite like to go into books not knowing too much about them but regardless let me introduce you to some of these books. So we'll start off with the classics. Here I have The Betrothed by um, Alessandro Mazzoni um, and this is an Italian classic from um, I think the early 19th century, I want to say in the 1830s. It is in fact from 1827 um, and this edition was translated in the 1970s by Bruce Penman and I'm really excited to read this one. One of my goals for this year was to read some Italian classics um, and I've seen this one recommended quite a lot and I'm actually going to be buddy reading this with Kate Howe and a few other booktubers which will be really really lovely um, especially as it's a slightly longer book. So I'm going to be starting this in June and I'm really excited to get into it. I think it'll be really interesting. Um, I know that it is a work of historical fiction. I know it is set in the 17th century not in the 19th century and I'm assuming that it is about a betrothed couple but you know we'll find out. Um, I don't necessarily want to know more about it than that, but I am really excited for this and yeah, hoping to get to this very, very soon. I'm hoping I'll finish it in June. If I don't, it might end up carrying over into July because it is a bit longer, but I think this will be a really great read and I've just heard many good things. The next two were actually birthday presents from a booktuber from Jenny from Book of Shenanigans. I'll link her channel down below if you don't watch her videos, you absolutely should. Um, and she gave me two books for my birthday. Um, this is The Cop and the Anthem and Other Stories by O. Henry. I know that O. Henry is a kind of well-respected 20th century American short story writer. That's mostly what I know about him. Um, but I think this will be an interesting short story collection. He's one of those authors I've been meaning vaguely to read for a while. And there are quite a lot of stories in here actually. And it's not a long book. So I think all the stories are pretty short. They look like they're about sort of six or seven pages which is a very nice length for a short story so I'm really excited to get to this and um, I think this will be a really interesting read and the other book Jenny gave me was also a short story collection this is The Closed Door and Other Stories by Dorothy Whipple which I'm really excited for because I read Dorothy Whipple's novel Young Anne a year or two ago which I really really enjoyed I say a year or two ago it's probably longer ago than that but I really really liked Young Anne and I really want to read more by Dorothy Whipple so I'm very excited to have this on my shelves too um, and this is a beautiful Persephone Classics edition with um, quite a few different short stories. The Closed Door, The Rose, Youth, The Handbag, Family Crisis, After Tea. These are short stories from the 1930s and the 1940s um, and I know that I really like Dorothy Whipple's writing style so I'm really looking forward to these. Moving away from classics onto some contemporary things. Um, I also got this for my birthday. This is Nettle Black by Nat Reeves. I've heard fantastic things about this. I gather this is sort of like adventurous feminist historical novel set in the 1890s so that sounds very up my street um, and it is a very beautiful edition so I'm looking forward to picking this up at some then I was also given this for my birthday. This is The Way It Breaks by Polis Luzo. Um, and I don't know very much about this, but it sounds really intriguing. No one I'd ever heard of before. But this novel is set in contemporary Cyprus and it's about a young man who is unhappy with his life um, and trying to find a way to change it. It sounds really intriguing, so I'm looking forward to this one too. The next two books are books that I bought for myself. Um, and this is Gwen and Art Are Not In Love by Lex Croucher, um, which I think will just be an utter joy to read. I really love Lex Croucher's books. I've been lucky enough to work as an editor on some of them 
their adult fiction and their Regency stories are just like an utter delight and joy. And this is their first YA book. And I think it's like a sort of um, loose King Arthur inspired medieval tale. And it's about Gwen and Art, um, who everyone thinks ought to get married, but the Gwen and Art are not in love because in fact, Gwen prefers girls and Art prefers boys. And I gather the book is about how um, the two of them sort of form an unlikely alliance. And it just sounds wonderful. Um, I'm sure it will be a delight as all Lex's books are. And I'm very, very excited to read it. And then there is also this book. This is Mrs. Nash's Ashes by Sarah Adler, um, which is a wonderful rom-com. Um, I have already read this, so I'll talk about it more at my June wrap up, but um, it's an utter delight in every way. This is the story of Millie, who is a slightly eccentric young woman um, whose best friend has recently passed away. Her best friend was a very elderly woman, so it isn't a massive surprise, but Millie is now on a mission to reunite her best friend's ashes with her long lost love from World War II. But she doesn't have all of Mrs. Nash's ashes because Mrs. Nash's grandson would only let her have a few tablespoons. So she's just traveling across the country with a few tablespoons of ashes in order to try and reunite Mrs. Nash with her long lost love. But when all the flights are grounded, Millie's mission seems in jeopardy until she comes across in the airport a young man called Hollis, who is a sort of frenemy of her ex-boyfriend. Um, and she and Hollis end up sort of carpooling across the country. Um, and of course, there is a little bit of a love story there too. And it's just excellent. And it just has all of the things I want in a rom-com um, with a massively relatable, wonderful central character. And I just loved it very, very much. So yes, highly, highly recommend Mrs. Nash's Ashes. It is wonderful. Then finally, I also got two non-fiction books for my birthday. Um, so this is A Once Upon a Time by Oliver Darkshire. Um, and the subtitle is The Misadventures of a Rare Bookseller. So this is a non-fiction book, which is all about book selling um, and selling rare books. I think this will be a really interesting read. Um, I always do love a non-fiction book about books. Um, maybe I'll save this one for non-fiction November. Uh, but I was really excited to get this for my birthday, um, especially because I had seen Oliver Darkshire posting on Twitter about this book um, and specifically about the quote he got from Neil Gaiman, um, because Neil Gaiman sent him a message and said, um, can I have another copy? Because unfortunately I have mislaid the book in question. And Oliver Darkshire said, um, no, can I just have that quote please? Because it's perfect for the book. And I thought that was just really, really excellent. I don't know whether that's actually true, but if it is, it's delightful. So yes. I think this will be really fun. And finally, a book I'm really, really excited for. I have Bleaker House by Nell Stevens. Nell Stevens is one of my favourite writers. Um, I have read her non-fiction-ish book, Mrs. Gaskell and Me, which I just adore, and also her um, novel, Briefly a Delicious Life, both of which are just absolutely fantastic. Like, both of which are genuinely two of my favourite books of all time. And then this is her first book, which is a non-fiction book about writing I suppose. The subtitle is How Far Would You Travel to Become a Writer? And I think this is basically a sort of memoir about writing and about what happened when Nell Stevens kind of travelled to um, somewhere called Bleak House in the Falklands in order to sort of be there and write. And like at the very front of the book it says this is the work of memory and invention by someone who set out to be a novelist. The memoir chapters include fictional characters, events and chronologies and the interspersed fiction is just that. So I think just like Mrs Gaskell and me this is going to be like a blend of non-fiction and fiction um, and something that is sort of in between um, and I really love that in Mrs Gaskell and Me so I'm sure I will like it in Bleaker House too. I thought it was called Bleaker House as a reference to Dickens um, but apparently Nell Stevens did go to somewhere that was called Bleaker House so um, maybe maybe there's nothing about Dickens in here. Will I be sad and disappointed? I don't think so because it is Nell Stevens. I'm sure this will be amazing. So there we go. Those are lots of books that I have acquired lately. Have I been acquiring too many books? Possibly. Is my TBR out of control? Also, possibly. Um, I don't know how many books are on my TBR anymore. Basically, I think it's somewhere between 50 and 60 now, but I don't want to count because I think if I count, it's probably going to actually be 70, which considering my usual aim is to have a TBR between 20 and 30 books is not really great. But, you know, that's fine. I am excited for all the books, but my TBR shelf is looking very full and has several piles of books towering on top of it. But you know, it's fine. I'll get through them at some point. But anyway, those are all the books I have to share with you today. So please do let me know down in the comments, have you read any of these? What did you think of them? Are there any you think I need to push to the top of my pile? And that's all for now. Thanks so much for watching and I'll be back very soon with another bookish video.